welcome back to Frankie Panky's Journey. Okay, so today on the menu is this humongous meatloaf you guys requested. So this is my mama's recipe, so she told me not to give it out. So I'm not going to give it out, unfortunately, but this is my mom's. Um, and so it's got cheese in it. I'm just going to give you a little, you know, little tidbit. And of course, I'm going to tell you the seasonings and stuff. But there's cheese in it, barbecue sauce, and um, delicious ground beef, of course. And then we've got loaded mashed potatoes with gravy and some delicious um, parsley flakes to make it yummy. Salt and pepper, milk, um, a delicious Thai salad. And I've got cucumbers in there, chicken, wontons, uh, tomatoes, cheese, along with this really good, delicious like sauce that's supposed to go on it, the dressing. So, got that. Got my extra beef gravy here, you guys. Look at that. Whoa. I'll be getting more of that. And then, of course, my delicious tea. Okay. So, I am diving in because I'm starving like always. And I'm so excited. I don't even know where to begin. So, I'm just going to dive in, you guys. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's so big, like I can't even eat it. And of course, I'm never going to eat all this. I mean, that would be insane. And that would be like hospital, like 911. But I'm definitely going to eat it, some of it anyway, because it looks so good. And it's good, actually. Mmm. You guys, this is like fantastic. I just keep digging in it like a shovel. Mm. Yummy. Mm. Delicious. So. When I was growing up, Sauce Queen and her family lived about like 40 miles away from where I lived. So when we were younger, mm, we saw each other a lot during the summer because we had like, you know, slumber parties and sleepovers and lots of laughing and giggling. Um, we'd go to all the amusement parks because Southern California is like loaded with amusement parks. I mean loaded. So that was like a big thing when we were kids. To go to amusement parks and the beach and hang out. Mm. I'm just more salt and pepper on this. I am... One for salt. I love salt. Okay. So, one time, Kristen and I went to Knoxbury Farm. And with my sister, and that was like my sister's favorite amusement park. So, every year for her birthday, she would want to go to like Knoxbury Farm, my sister did. Mm. Oh my gosh, so good, guys. So we would get on this ride. It's called the log ride. And I'm like petrified of heights. Petrified. So we got on it, and when we were younger, like my mom, like... My mom and dad would like take us and we'd hang out together and get funnel cakes and all kinds of cool stuff. So my mom dad got on it, my sister got on it, and Kristen and my younger sister were always like so close. They were so tight when we were younger. They're still close, but as we've gotten older, like me and Kristen are closer now. And then 
so it's gotten this, you know, a lot different. Because when I was younger, I used to always be closer to Kristen's older brother, Marcus. And so I didn't really play a lot with Kristen except when we went to like amusement parks or family fun. Sometimes when we're at family events and stuff. So we get on this ride, the log ride. I get in, I'm petrified of heights. And of course, what do I get to see, sit up? Right up in the front, like front and center. So then it's like my sister behind me and then Kristen behind her. And we're all holding each other. Of course, I'm the only one that's like not getting secured because I'm in the front. So who am I gonna hold on to the log? And there's like tons of like drops that just drop you down. So we're going and I'm scared of height and all of a sudden because I was so skinny, I was like a little skinny like noodle when I was a kid, like so skinny. The first drop, we were fine. Streaming, raising the hands, doing all this stuff that you know, stupid things you do when you're kids that you know that now as an adult you're like, don't put your hands up, secure yourself. But I had my hands up, even though I was scared of height, trying to be like the big cousin. All of a sudden, we just go down this huge drop, and I'm screaming and I'm crying and I'm like scared to death. And all of a sudden, we get to the bottom, and all this water just goes and gets right up in my face. And like, I am like scared to death. I thought I like drowned in this water. It was such a big, like drop i was like petrified i got out and i was like crying and kristen was laughing her ass off i was literally laughing her ass off called me a big baby and i was a big baby i was like <laughs> scared to death little turd she's still like that laughs her ass off every time i'm like scared she's so funny that way so it makes it so fun to be around her Mm. We used to go to Disneyland together and hang out, drink the big lemonade drinks, Pirates of the Caribbean, Haunted House, all the cool things you do at Disneyland. We used to hang out there like, didn't even have a, we didn't have a pass then, but we would just go there a lot when we were kids, all of us. Back then it was like expensive for our parents too. And it's like 10 times more now, but. It's good memories, you know, when you're a kid, going to amusement parks and doing slumber parties, doing birthday parties. Mm. All right guys, I'm gonna put this dressing on. Oh my goodness. Now, this is supposed to be a really good, um, in case I want some more, a uh, really good Asian salad. So kind of hard to see because, okay, I'm gonna put my drink down here. Because the meat love is stacked so high. Mm. Oh yeah. Mm. Excellent salad, you guys. Dressing's a little a little spicy. It's got a little kick to it. Mmm. Yeah. Mm. 
Mmm. I love cucumber sides. Mm-hmm. Let's see some more stories when we we're kids. So when we were kids, we had like a pool in our backyard. And so we were like little orcas in the pool. Like me and my sister Kristen, we loved to swim when we were kids. We were like always in there. Our parents had to like pull us out to get out of the pool. We never wanted to get out of the pool. We had all kinds of like floaties, water guns, water balloons. We were like morning to night in that pool when we were kids growing up. We loved our highlights of the summer was like us all hanging out together. Cause we were so close, you know, we lived like within 40 mile range and really close to age and we're all girls and having a big summer party with my sister and Kristen and so much fun. A lot of fun. Mm. Great thing about being like all girls, you know, like, you know, you get to be able to do each other's hair, you know, and makeup and play dress up and, you know, your mom's like hills and so much fun. We used to walk around and have a bunch of like little talent shows. Guys, look at this. This thing is like so good and gooey. Mm-hmm. I think one of the biggest family parties I had that I just love and I just so remember is like going up, we're at our grandparents' house out in the valley and I was like Big Daddy's birthday and my grandparents had like a big pool in their backyard. So everybody was in the pool. We we're having a big old barbecue, lots of food. Oh my gosh, lots of food. Um amazing mariachi singers. That were just like playing for hours and hours and hours. It was like so much fun and we're all jumping, doing cannonballs and getting yelled at our parents for not behaving the, the pool rules, <laughs> running around and mm. Oh, good. So those are some of the stories when we were growing up with me and Sauce Queen. We just had a lot of fun. We'd like, you know, spend the summer together and do crafts and make all kinds of really cool things and, you know, just things that you do as girls. You know, back then it was like so simple, you know, when we were kids to live and crafts were like tie-dyeing shirts back then, you know, like 
Now it's coming back. It's like the cool kid thing now to do tie dye stuff and make friendship bracelets. I remember we were, we'd go to like Joanne's and Michael's and get all this like yarn to make friendship bracelets. I'm telling you, we had so much fun when we were kids because we used to spend the summers together, all of us. And so, it was like really cool back then, you know, you could ride your bikes and just like hang out in the front yard and it was like very simple back then. It was, you know, life was a lot different than it is now for kids playing outside and stuff. Mm. So I put a little cabbage in this and some chicken. It was so good. And then just regular salad. And I just mixed it in with this like um, Thai like dressing that I got at Walmart. And it's okay. I mean, I like the salad. I think I would have changed it to ranch. I really like ranch is my favorite. But I thought, hmm, I saw this dressing and it looked kind of good, but I probably won't buy it again because it's too spicy for me. Yeah. So I'm definitely still in quarantine mood because I got this headband on because my roots are really bad. And for some reason, even though I got a haircut like several months ago, it's like fizzy and so it's not happening so I'm definitely back to quarantine hair <laughs> what I need is big daddy come over and take care of this hot mess damn it big daddy where are ya Get your ass over here and give me my hair done. <laughs> Big Daddy will have to work this mop shit. Mm. He is such a good hairdresser. Really, guys. He really is. He's never lost his talent. He's very good at what he does. I usually don't let people touch my hair unless they really know what they're doing because I'm really picky about my hair haircuts color everything and um, but he knows what he's doing mm. oh yeah So yesterday I went for this most beautiful, amazing walk in my neighborhood. And I just love when you can go out and you hear like the birds chirping, big white fluffy clouds. It's like so amazing. It's very therapeutic when you think about it because it's just like so natural. And it's nice because like you know, you don't hear cars going up and down the street and it's like relaxing and you just walk around and I enjoy nature. So. Ah. Yes. This is like definitely not making a dent however it is like a huge ass meatloaf so definitely we'll be having this for a couple days for sure So 
So, when I was driving trucks, out of Texas, I went to an area in Texas called Laredo, which is like down by the Mexican border. And at the time, I was driving what they call a reefer, which is like a refrigerator unit. And so, I was either hauling like candy. We ship a lot of stuff over to Mexico that are, that's candy. A lot of Mars, a lot of Hershey. A lot of candy. So, we do a lot of exports to Canada, I mean, to uh, Mexico for candy, which is shocking. I didn't know we did so much exports over there for candy, but we also export a lot of um, meat over there. So I would would pick up a lot of hams um, for my shippers, um, a lot of like pork, so a lot of their meat and chocolate come from the U.S. So there's an area in Laredo, it's called Shippers Lane, and there's a lot of truckers that go there all the time because they've got like almost 20 shippers on a row, but there's only one way in and one way out. And it's really dangerous because there's tons of trucks coming in and out of it, and it's so tight. And everybody's trying to get there on time to get their delivery loaded. So a lot of people get, and then they have cops down there because it's close to the border. And because there's so much traffic and congestion down there, a lot of truckers get really, really irate because they're being logged, lodged in between other trucks and they can't get to their shipper. Um, there's like really bad traffic control down there. So... <clears throat> I remember when I first went down there and I was doing this run and I was petrified because I didn't know what to expect. Like I'd pull up there and, you know, there's a lot of like, you know, security down there with guns drawn and um, a lot of dogs, you know, because it's, a, you know, you get smuggled all kinds of stuff across the border right there. It's very close. So it kind of was like scary at first because I was new to trucking and I didn't know what to expect. And you get a lot of, a lot of the guards that, you know, when your windows roll down, you know, they'll screen you out and they'll get up top of your, on the driver's side. Excuse me, guys. And you've got the dogs like barking kind of like viciously. So it can be really scary because you got the guards up there with their guns and they're asking for your bill of lading and they're you know, asking, you got other ones that are coming up and they're asking you, they're begging you for water or food, um, you know, some of the homeless people. So it's very, very scary down there on Shippers Row. And so I remember going there one time and I couldn't get the truck backed up for like nothing for the life of me. I was so panicky, so sweating. I got out and I kept trying and trying at this shipper and finally the yard dog's like if you just drop it right here I'll like back it in but he's like I'm only going to do this one time and I was like oh thank goodness so I was like totally stuck there I dropped it off sweating so profusely because it was so hot in Laredo I mean it was in the middle of summer so hot I was when I drop it and I see all these dogs viciously coming up to me, and it, like, with their trainers, you know, the guards, thinking that I was, like, smuggling something in the trailer. It was so scary, you guys. You have no idea. I mean, I'm so glad that I didn't go back on that, that location or that route because it was scary. You don't have any idea be like you know what you're running up against in these things and especially when you're first starting out it's like petrifying when you come up to something like that mm. so when I got done I called my dispatcher I said I don't want to ever go back there don't send me another run to that location because you guys didn't warn me 
I went in, I got stuck up there because our trailer was supposed to actually go to another location and they actually gave me the wrong address. Same area, but the wrong address for that location that had an A and a B. And I was supposed to go to B and I went to A. Which made the problem even worse. Trying to get out of that sector. I'm going to get back into the, the line, the progression line, to go to the other location. It was a nightmare. So, unfortunately, that happens a lot. You know, your dispatcher will say, well, we go to this location all the time. It should be this location. And then they give you the wrong, the wrong location. So, it can be rough sometimes. Completely rough. So, me see truckers and they get really agitated and rough on the road. I mean, give them a little bit of a break because, you know, they, you just don't know what they're dealing with. There'd be a lot of reasons why they're upset or agitated. It could be road rage, but it also could be something with the dispatcher, the shipper. So, I'm not saying like, you know, just, you know, roll it over, no big deal. I mean, but there could be always a reason why uh, a trucker is not like upset about something. So it's not all about just driving down the road. I mean, a lot of people think, oh, you just drive down the road and it's no big deal. There's so much more involved that goes into trucking than just driving down the highway, for sure. So. Okay, guys. Well, I definitely cannot eat all of this. So I'm glad I disclaimed that up front in my video. But it was so good, my mama's meatloaf and I hope whoever asked for this meatloaf is really enjoying this meatloaf and this delicious salad and I hope you guys continue watching me I really do appreciate your support and your love and just want to let you know how much I enjoy this meatloaf mm -hmm. I could help myself have one more bite even though I'm probably gonna explode Okay, guys, I love you, and we'll see you next time on Frankie Pinky's Journey. Bye!